Hi, this is Melissa Dinwiddie from Living a Creative Life. This is my weekly review number 25. And today I want to talk about passion. When I was leaving my yoga class the other day, um, a friend of mine from class asked me when I'm going to start teaching. I went through a yoga teacher training program and I'm fairly advanced in my practice. And um, my response was, I don't want to teach right now. I did teach for a while, a couple of years ago, for a few months, and I really enjoyed it. But I you know, probably made about $60 a week for about six hours of work <laughs> and driving, and including transportation time. And that, um, I was overextended, as I usually am. And something had to give. And so yoga was the thing that went. And it took me a while to come to terms with that. But I basically came to terms with the fact that although I'm passionate about yoga, becoming a yoga teacher was really not where my passion was. And I love to teach. But I had other things going on in my life that were higher priorities for me that fed my soul even more. So if I had wanted to become a yoga teacher and really pursue that, it would have been a no-brainer. I would have kept going and the amount of money I was making would have made a difference. But my art and the other things that were going on were just more important to me. So all that is to say that it's really important to figure out what is your true passion and follow that and don't get bogged down by all the things that you're good at that you like doing maybe but aren't really your passion because it's your passion that's going to keep driving you and if you're passionate about something you will keep pursuing it and you will dedicate yourself to it and you will succeed at it but if that particular thing is not your passion, no matter how much people tell you you should be doing it, no matter how good you are at it, it doesn't matter because it's not your passion. So don't let that thing or those things get in the way of your true passion. I had a second conversation yesterday at the breakfast after, after Yom Kippur. A friend of mine asked me, well, what if you don't have a passion? What if there's something that you're not passionate about? I mean, what if there's nothing that you're passionate about? What do you do if you're trying to figure out, this person is trying to figure out their life, trying to reinvent themselves, but doesn't have a clear direction because they don't have a clear passion to follow? And I don't really have an answer to that. I think that you do the things that you enjoy and spend time doing the things that you know that you enjoy and you know maybe if you spend enough time at them you might discover a passion for me my passions have always kind of you know <laughs> grabbed hold of me <laughs> but the interesting thing is sometimes something started out as not a passion and then time passed and I encountered that same thing again and all of a sudden I fell madly in love with it. That happened to me with calligraphy. I started doing calligraphy right after I graduated from college, and I thought, gee, maybe I'll become a calligrapher. Sat down at my kitchen table, practiced for maybe, I don't know, a week. Went to the career center at my university, looked up calligrapher, and it seemed like the only thing calligraphers did was fill out certificates and address envelopes. And that wasn't enough to keep me practicing every day at my kitchen table. But a few years later, or five years later, suddenly I picked up a calligraphy pen again, and all of a sudden, it I couldn't get enough of it. I could not do enough calligraphy. I couldn't look at enough calligraphy. I was obsessed with it. Who would have known? You know, five years earlier, who would have known? Same thing with my ukulele. Now, I've been going to music camps for several years. God, 2002 was my first music camp, so eight years or something like that. I've been going to music camps. And, you know, there's been a ukulele class at just about every acoustic music camp I've ever been to. 
never had the slightest interest in picking up the ukulele. Even though I've, I'd seen ukulele players who had made, like James Hill, who had taught at my classes, who had made my jaw drop in astonishment. And I thought, gee, I wish I could do that. Never had any desire to pick up the ukulele until this year, just a couple months ago, and all of a sudden I was just insanely passionate about learning the ukulele. And I haven't been able to put my ukulele down practically ever since. So that's the interesting thing about passions. You just never know when they're going to grab you by the throat <laughs> and get hold of you. The other thing to remember, I was just listening to the radio earlier this evening. I was listening to, um, uh, to the best of our knowledge on NPR. And one of the interviewees was Jeffrey Colvin, who has written a book called Talent is Overrated. And it sounds like he talks about a lot of the same things that um, the guy who wrote uh, Malcolm, I'm spacing on his name, but he wrote The Tipping Point and um, Outliers. And the point is basically that no one could have predicted at age 10 or 12 who was going to end up being a world-class piano player? You couldn't predict it. Because it's the dedication, it's the time that you put into it that is going to determine how much you master something. And the thing is, if you're passionate enough about it, you will persevere and you will keep going at that thing, whatever it is. But if you're not passionate about it, you're not going to persevere. So the kids who had phenomenal talent at age 10 might not have had enough passion to keep them practicing through the really boring, painful, excruciating times to get to the point of really being world class. Now, it's too late for me to become, you know, a world-class ukulele artist, the level of James Hill or one of these people. But I'm really passionate about it. So for as long as that passion lasts, which I don't know how long it's going to last, but, you know, could last forever, could last for a couple years, who knows. But for as long as that passion lasts, I am going to keep working at it and keep improving. And the beautiful thing is, if there's something that you're passionate about, and you dedicate yourself to it, and you work at it, you will improve. So I'm going to give you just a little taste. I learned a song um, at the ukulele festival, the Wine Country Ukulele Festival, just um, last weekend. I learned a little song, which I can't play very well yet. But I've been working on it, and I can play it better than I could at the festival, which is something. And, you know, in a few weeks, I will presumably be able to play it better than I do now. So here it is. This is called Goofus. It's uh, lyrics by Gus Kahn, and I can't remember the songwriters. I'll have to write that in the post. All right, so here's, so here's Goofus. This is where I am right now, September 19th, 2010. Check back in a few weeks, a few months, a year from now, and you'll see where I am then. I was born on a farm out in Idaho way of flaming youth was found that she'd fly away, so I packed up and grabbed my ukulele.
check back in a couple weeks. And that's the thing. Put in time every day. If you're passionate about it, you will put the time in. That's all for today. See you next time.